So now we're going to do the water pump on this Evan Rudy Tech, and to do that, we need to remove the shift linkage, which is in here. There's a screw head. Remove that one, and that disconnects the shift rod itself from the controls and gearbox. We've got two bolts here, and the same on the other side. Under here, we've got a main bolt there that needs to be remo removed. And we also have a one under this trim tab. Remove the trim tab, retaining bolt, and there's another one here. Take note when you do this, the position of the trim tab, you can mark it with a permanent marker, just so it goes on the correct way. So there we go, with a flat blade screwdriver, it was in there and I've removed it, and there it is there. Now the shift rod is disengaged from the control unit, so once the bolts are removed, the unit will drop and this rod will go with it. If I didn't remove this pin, when all the bolts are out, it will be hung up on here, and we could probably cause damage, bend, something. So remove that, and then you can remove all your bolts. And just for reference, this is on the left-hand side of the engine, at the front here. Remove the side cover, just makes life easier, and you can get into it under here. So for this main one under here, you've got an Imperial 5.8. I have had problems with these ones before being really stiff, so I've got the a long breaker bar on it. This one isn't too bad, it's come off straight away. Um, so we'll remove that, and then I'll work on the trim tab, just a small bolt there, and there's one inside. And there's the reason why we are fine getting this one out, is because it's covered in copper slip. So whoever served this last did a good job. Can't thank them enough for it because I've had them before where they're dry and they're near impossible to get out. Okay, so the lower unit is about to come off. I've got one bolt left here. We've taken the other three 916 bolts out. We've taken the central one off here and there's one inside there, which is hidden by the trim tab. Take the trim tab off with that bolt and there's one inside. So my next step is I'm going to take some slack off on these bolts, this last one, just so I can see the thread and I'm going to try and I'm going to tap the ventilation plate and to break the seal here so I know it's going to come away. Once I'm happy with it that it's going to come away I'm going to remove the bolt fully and then the entire leg should come out. So what I mean by that is as you can see I've slackened that bolt off and you can see thread there. You can see it's starting to appear the crack as we give it a few taps it is starting to open there so i'm happy that it's going to come away what i'll do is now i'll take that last bolt out i need two hands for this and once that's out the whole thing should slide straight down remembering that you've got a shift a shift shaft and the power shaft so don't just try and pull it on an angle straight away withdraw it fully you'll see what I, you'll see what i mean when you do it yourself and you see it that's the leg off now didn't take much and here it is I've just rested it on here there's no way on this shaft here or on this one because I don't want them to bend as everything's just been held at the bottom there just take note of the orientation of this shift linkage here because it has got an orientation make sure it goes back in the same way it's come out not that we're going to be removing it there's the power head spline there that's what's driving the gearbox at all times and the water pump which is located here and we're going to do a full water pump rebuild, not just the impeller, I've got everything, including the top housing there. So here we have it, we've got all the parts here laid out. We've got some new bolts. And the instructions. Well, not so much instructions, but what you get with it. And it just as referred to the service manual. First thing we're going to do is remove the old top cover, which is held on by four bolts. So the size of these four are three eighths. So we'll remove these now and we'll see the condition of the water pump. Now, ideally when you do this job, normally I'd have it in a vice um, workbench and like that. I haven't got that today, but for those that don't have one, this is the same way, just rest it somewhere. Don't put any weight on these shafts because they can bend. So with the four bolts out, we can just see if it'll wanna break free there. I don't think it's been off for a while, so it has got a bit of resistance there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a, a flat blade screwdriver and where it is lifting, I'm just gonna give it a helping hand just to break the seal. And there we go, it's coming up and all over. 
So we'll just take the housing off first and we can see the impeller there. The impeller seems to be okay condition, first glance. Um, no loss of blades. We have got a bit of compression there. Um, the wear plate, not looking too bad. Inside of the housing, not too bad as well. A bit of indent there where it's been running. Overall, not disastrous. So we'll lift the impeller off now. So, try and get this impeller off. It's pretty well seized on. Might have got a bit of heat on it. But what's happened is I've tried to lift it off and the impeller has come away from the actual like hub. Um, it's pretty stuck on fast, but we'll get it off. So after that, I just got some heat on it, heated it around that collar on here, and then just pried it off with some pry bars. And while it's still warm, I've got it off. So that's what the impeller is sort of bonded to. The keyway, I lost the keyway when I, when I popped it off. It went, in, went into the grass somewhere. Can't find it, but it's off and we can build the new water pump. So that's what it looks like without the wear plate on. So this is just the basic, you've got your water, your water seal there, or your water seal for your gear case and we'll build it from scratch. Okay, so starting from the bottom, we've got the gasket and the wear plate. So a good tip is to use the old one as reference as to how it came off. So as we can see, gasket's underneath here, and that's how it's lined up. So I'm gonna put the gasket on underneath. Get it turned around right, just like that and we'll set these over the top. So that's them on. Next thing we've got, we've got the new pump housing and insert. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bit of uh, marine grease just to aid it when it comes out next. There's a air purge hole here, do not get anything on that or sort of where it mates to in here or else you'll find it hard to um, sort of priming the engine with water. So we're just going to do it on the outside there. Got a locating tab there as well. So I'm just using this um, Quicksilver 24C grease. Don't need much. I say it's just it's just to aid the installation. So don't go like plastering it on. And inside the housing itself there's an indent where this tab locates and there we go it's in and it's flush the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the new impeller over it's held on with a with a cam so like a keyway which is down here it's a, it's a flat section and we've got a cam that goes in so we're on the left hand side of the engine here so the thick end is going to be facing forwards there's the cam profile like that to aid installation Put a little bit of grease on there just to stick it on. So as you can see there, I put a little bit of grease on there and I'm just going to stick the cam onto there. Just wipe off the excess, we don't need that much on there. Now I'm going to take the new impeller and put a small amount on the inside of the hub there just to aid it as it comes down the power shaft. Not too much, just enough so it won't bind up. And then it's just a simple case of taking the impeller and running it down the shaft. And it should slide over the cam if we've got it lined up correctly. So we go there, I'll just see if I can show you with it again. So there's the cam and the impeller is sliding over the top and it will engage and lock to the shaft. Which is very important. There we go, let's confirm that's locked on. So nice little step, we've got a, an O-ring that sits in here. Drop the O-ring in there. Again, it can be easier if you put a little bit of grease on there just to stick it in. You see, you just need a, a tiny amount. So yeah, there's the, the O-ring there. And it's a small amount of grease, top and bottom. There we go, and we're gonna just drop it over the shaft. 
So yeah, I've got the I've got the housing on there now. Um, to get it in with the impeller, I find just turning the drive shaft itself in the direction of the impeller's travel as you push down firmly on the housing, and it sort of just finds its own way and it gets in there. Now we've just got the four bolts to put in, and then we've got the top seal. There we are, the four bolts, just nip them up. No particular order. Once it's done, just go around and nip each one up. And there we go. Right, so now we've just got the two seals that go on. This round one just goes over the top of the water tube, and this one goes over the top of the drive shaft. It has got a small cutout here, which matches the water pickup tube. So just drop them down and over. Nice and firm, and there you can see they're both on. So that there concludes just how you do a water pump on an Evinrude E-Tech. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you take it apart, basically it's the reverse of that when you reassemble it. One thing I like to do, I always grease the tip of the drive shaft just so it aligns with the splines and the power head before we reassemble. So I just guided the leg back in there. I've got one bolt just on the threads. Took some aligning with the power shaft. And on this one, it seemed to me that the, if you can see it very well, but the, the grommet that the shift shaft goes through was getting pushed out of the way. So it was, the shift shaft was getting pushed out of direction. Um, I've got a bit of clearance to come up yet, but that'll get taken up on the, on the gear case gap there. It's pretty much aligned. So once it's up, I'll be able to get that little bolt through and that'll be locked back on and I can get all the air, uh, the lower unit bolts back in. So the last step, once all the bolts are in, on the lower unit, is just to get into that shift bolt, which passes through the shifter. And I'm just trying to line the flatbed screwdriver up. There you go, see me turning it there. Nice and tight. And that's it nipped up I'm on the right hand side there you can see it so for a lower unit removal water pump reinstallation that's it done so we just got to put the side the side panels back on and we're good to go so there you have it the lower unit's done it's back on all the bolts are on the side panels cowlins on um, one thing to check is once you've got it all back together, just make sure it's not in gear. Um, it shouldn't be if you've got the bolt back in at the shifter. And as always, if you've got any bolts left over, see if you can figure out where from. So yeah, that's about it. Hope you've enjoyed that small video.